Welcome to Weld.com. I get asked a lot about running a, a gasless flux core wire. We do a lot of MIG welding with the shielding gas. Uh, there's, another, there's another option here. A lot of people will pick up the smaller 110 volt machines. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's an advantage to be able to do some MIG welding, wire welding, without the expense of a regulator and a bottle of gas. It's a gasless flux core wire. And there's two things about the wire that we need to explain. It, um, it, it's kind of a raspy process. There's a lot of sparks, there's a lot of, uh, and it produces a, a light slag. And that's okay, it just, it looks different, it sounds different, and don't, don't be scared of it. Because you can make some quality welds that are structurally strong. Another thing that I need to explain about running gasless flux core wire is, it runs on straight polarity. DC electrode negative, so you need to switch your leads. I've been called out a lot at a friend of mine that called me one time and said, man, I got this little welder. Uh, I have a gasless flux core wire. It doesn't run worth a poo. It's bad. You couldn't get it set right. I said, I'll be over in just a few minutes. Walked in, I saw where his machine was set, and he actually had the bolt lugs on the inside of the machine where you change the jumper, and we did that, and it it worked perfect. So again, change it to a DC electrode negative. Another thing that I want to explain um, about MIG welding, gas metal arc welding, regardless of what wire, but especially with this gasless flux core wire is drive roll tension. This wire feeds out of here pretty nicely, smooth. Correct drive roll tension is I can stop this wire with my finger, okay? Remember, if you're running too much drive roll pressure, you can actually collapse the wire and it comes out of here like this. It comes out of here with the pigtail and swirling around. You're distorting the integrity of the wire. So believe it or not, you can back this thing off quite a ways and it'll still feed smooth. But if you can stop it with your finger, you're, you're just right with the, with the drive roll pressure. So um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to demonstrate a fillet weld first. Um, so let me get my gear on and we'll come back and make this weld. I want to make this weld <clears throat> pointing the wire pretty much straight into this joint. I'm going to lean this backwards about 10 degrees or so. Um, I want to just kind of oscillate along. What I'm going to be looking at is behind the weld, since I know this produces a, a light slag, about an eighth of an inch up on the weld pool is gonna be a little shelf kind of fluttering around there and that's where the slag is and that's where the weld bead solidifies. That's what I'm gonna be looking at along with the two edges. This is gonna be a little slower process and uh, I'm set at 18 volts and 265 on this machine. I believe I have about 35% inductance set. Uh, again, this is going to be kind of active. It's going to sound like a, a hiss and it's going to put out a lot of sparks, but it's okay. Now what I'm looking at while I'm making this weld is, the main thing is width. As you can see, it's putting out a lot of smoke and a lot of sparks. And I'm watching right behind where the wire is. very slight oscillation. That wire's dancing around a little bit, a little unstable, and that's, yeah, that's normal. I could probably go up in a, a half a volt or a full volt, increase the wire speed. Hey guys, today's episode is brought to you by Napotnik Welding Supply. They're giving away an ESOB Rebel machine, just like this used in today's episode. Uh, for a chance to win this machine, sign up to their email list. Let's get back to welding. You know, getting ready to terminate the weld, I come out here on the edge and go back through it and fill it up. <clears throat> As you can see, that looks, uh, looks kind of nasty. It's, uh, it's got a lot of spatter really don't see a, a, a weld bead at all. Um, so you're thinking, well, I did something wrong here. That's not wrong. That's just the nature and the, the art characteristics of this particular wire. 
I'm going to clean this up. The first thing I'm going to do is put a, a wire wheel bead brush on it. If I have to uh, sand some of the heavy sparks off of it, I will. I don't think I will, but may have to. So let me clean this up. I'll be right back. This is the weld that we just completed with the gasless flux core wire. I had cleaned this off with a, uh, a wire wheel on a grinder, hand grinder. Before we cleaned this off, it was covered. A uh, lot of spatter out here, a lot of discoloration. I went ahead and purposely left this here. That's the smoke and, and some of the stuff that came up off there. But as you can see, this weld cleaned up fairly nicely. It, is, uh, it has good profile. It's not undercut on the top or the bottom and it has a nice rounded edge. I'm only a 3 16th material thickness, so this bead profile and bead shape I think is acceptable. Again, uh, gasless wire. Uh, we could build some projects with this and structurally they would be, they'd be fine. I wouldn't be scared of using this process at all. Um, you know, it's an advantage to, to weld outside or to make some repairs, it's, it's cost effective. Uh, so I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be scared of this process at all. I hope this helps. It's a, I hope this helps with the explanation about the gasless flux core. Again, change the polarity, DCEN. Uh, please subscribe to the videos. We'll, we'll keep coming out with more every Monday.